Welcome, I'm Adam, an engineer for VisionKit. It is my pleasure to spend time with you today to talk about new features and API the team has been working on for this year. To recap, last year, live text support was added in VisionKit, enabling interactions such as text selection, translation, QR support, and more for images in your apps. VisionKit also introduced the data scanner view controller. The data scanner uses a live camera feed to provide a simple and full-featured way to capture specific text types, as well as many variants of machine-readable codes. Information on those APIs are included in these WWDC 22 sessions. The response from developers has been amazing, and this year I'm happy to announce VisionKit is adding support for both subject lifting and visual lookup. There's also a new live text API for text selection, expanded platform support for Catalyst, and context menu integration for native macOS apps. And now I'm going to get started with subject lifting. With a simple long press on the subject of an image, it lifts from its surroundings and becomes highlighted with this beautiful animated glow. And then I am presented with several options to share it or invoke visual lookup. New for iOS 17, you can now use any lifted subject to create a sticker with fun effects such as shiny, puffy, and more to share with your friends and family. Now the good news is, integrating subject lifting is very simple. In fact, there's a good chance you were already finished. Here is the same code snippet from last year's video where I analyze an image and set it on the interaction. But now it supports subject lifting without any code changed. Let's explore further. Notice I'm not passing anything special into the analyzer configuration. This is because in order to preserve power and performance, subject lifting analysis is handled separately by the interaction after the initial analysis is complete. For iOS, this process occurs after it's been on screen for a few seconds, and for macOS, it will occur the first time the menu appears. This means you don't need to handle the case of the user swiping through many photos. The interaction will handle this for you. All you need to do is ensure you have an appropriate interaction type set, in this case automatic, and the rest is handled by the interaction. Let's examine subject lifting compatible interaction types a bit closer. Automatic gives the default out of the box experience, combining text interaction, subject lifting, and more. If you only want subject lifting and not text selection or data detectors, you can set the interaction type to image segmentation or combine it with other types. And finally, as subject lifting just does not make sense for your app, but you want the previous automatic behavior from iOS 16, no problem. You can use a new type, automatic text only. This provides features such as text selection and data detectors, but not subject lifting. We have a detailed session specifically on subject lifting available if you would like to learn advanced topics about this amazing new technology in both Vision Kit and Vision. This year, Vision Kit also supports Visual Lookup. Visual Lookup allows users to easily identify and learn about pets, nature, landmarks, art, and media. And in iOS 17, Visual Lookup will support additional domains, including food, products, and signs and symbols. Now, finally, it's easy to look up what those symbols on your laundry tags mean. I mean, that's pretty cool if you ask me. Visual Lookup availability is based on language and is available for these languages. Let's take a quick peek under the hood and explore how Visual Lookup works. It's actually a two-part process. Initial processing is accomplished entirely on device at analysis time. If the Visual Lookup type is present in the analyzer configuration, Visual Lookup will locate the bounding box of the results and their top-level domain. For example, if it's a cat, book, or plant. This step also includes feature extraction. Once the user requests to look up an object, then and only then are the domain and image embeddings from feature extraction sent to the server for additional processing. Now you know how Visual Lookup works, let's quickly explore how to use it and what actions you need to take to add it to your app. Visual Lookup can be invoked in two different ways. The first is in conjunction with subject lifting. If the current lifted subject contains one and only one correlated visual lookup result, the lookup option will be offered in the menu and selecting it will show the full lookup result. Vision Kit handles this interaction for you automatically. As an adopter, all you need to do is have visual lookup added to your analyzer configuration at analysis time. 
Second, there is a modal interaction available where badges are placed over each of the visual search results. Notice how the badges move to the corner if they leave the viewport. Users can tap on these badges to show the lookup result. This is the same interaction as clicking on the info button in the Photos app or Quick Look, for example. This mode is invoked by setting Visual Lookup as the preferred interaction type on your interaction. Please note, this type will have precedence over the other interaction types. For example, you cannot select text or data detectors at the same time that the Visual Lookup mode is set. As such, this is normally used in conjunction with a button or some other bespoke way to get in and out of this mode. For example, Quick Look uses the Info button to enter Visual Lookup mode. Now, let's shift gears and discuss new API and features for the data scanner as well as live text. Introduced in iOS 16, the data scanner view controller was designed to be the easiest way to use OCR with a live camera viewfinder. In iOS 17, it's been enhanced with optical flow tracking as well as currency support. Optical flow tracking can enhance text tracking for live camera experiences. Here's what we have in iOS 16. I'm scanning for text with high frame rate tracking enabled. And this is what you'll get with optical flow tracking. Now the highlights feel much more stable and grounded than before. Optical flow tracking comes for free whenever you use the data scanner view controller. However, it is only available when recognizing text and not machine readable codes. And you're also required to scan for text without a specific text content type set. And finally, once again, ensure high frame rate tracking is enabled, which is conveniently the default. No matter how you configure it, the data scanner provides great text tracking. But if your use case allows for this configuration, the new optical flow tracking can enhance it even further. Next, the data scanner has a new option allowing users to find and interact with monetary values. It's incredibly simple to enable. Just set the text content type to currency when specifying text recognition in the data scanner's initializer, just as you would other content types like email addresses or telephone numbers. Now, I'm going to explore this new type in more detail with a quick example. When the data scanner recognizes currency in text, it contains both a bounds and a transcript. The transcript has both the currency symbol and the amount. Here's an example where I find the total of all the values on something like a receipt. First, I get the currency symbol using the current locale. While awaiting the data scanner's results in the recognize items stream, I can loop through each of the recognized items and grab its transcript. If the transcript contains the currency symbol I'm interested in, I'll go ahead and update the total value. And just like that, now you have the sum of all values. This is just a simple example, but this can be very powerful. I'm excited to see what you can build with this. And now, I'm going to talk about enhancements to live text. First off, live text is coming to more regions. By expanding our supported languages to include Thai and Vietnamese. Live text includes enhancements for document structure detection as well this year. Document structure detection? What does that even mean? Well. As an example, in iOS 16, live text supported list detection. This allows you to easily copy and paste a list into an app that understands lists, such as notes, and the list formatting will be maintained. Live text handles several list styles, such as numbers or bullets. And now, live text is offering the same support for tables, making it far easier to get structured table data from an image into applications like notes or numbers. Now I can select, copy, and paste this table into numbers, and the structure is maintained. Notice how it merges cells automatically if necessary. And just like that, I'm now just a few clicks away from visualizing this information in a graph. Nice. And that's not all. We are also adding context-aware data detectors in live text. For this feature, data detectors and their visual relationships are used when adding contacts. Notice how when I add this contact from an email address, additional information from surrounding data detectors are now included, allowing me to easily add all this information at once. Adding a contact from a business card or flyer has never been easier. In addition to these great features you are also getting for free, VisionKit has some new APIs specifically for text. Last year, 
you could get the entire text contents by accessing the transcript property on the image analysis. Based on your feedback, you now have full access to plain and attributed text, selected ranges, and easy access to selected text. There is also a new delegate method so you can be aware when the text selection changes and update your UI as appropriate. It is now easy to add features that rely on what the user has selected. For example, using the Menu Builder API, you could insert a menu item that creates a reminder based on the current text selection. Start on the View Controller that owns your image analysis interaction. First, grab the selected text and ensure it isn't empty. Then create a command that calls our handler when chosen. Now create a menu object that holds the command. And finally, insert that menu as a sibling after the Share Menu option. Now you have a custom menu alongside system items like Copy and Share. Now I'm going to talk about our expanded platform support. And this year it's all about the Mac. We are rolling out Catalyst support to easily bring live text from your iOS apps over to the Mac. And if you're new to the native Mac OS API and the image analysis overlay view, stay tuned because I'm going to go over some specifics as well as some tips on adopting them. Finally, I'm going to talk about a new system for menus, offering simple and seamless integration of Vision Kit into your contextual menus. Catalyst adoption is very straightforward. It should be a simple recompile to get the image analysis interaction working in Catalyst. We support live text, subject lifting, and visual lookup, but unfortunately, QR code support is unavailable in either the Catalyst environment or the native macOS API for Vision Kit. However, I wanted to let you know that if you have a shared implementation, leaving the machine-readable codes in your analyzer configuration for Catalyst is perfectly safe and just becomes a no-op. Also, please note the QR detection support is available in the Vision Framework if you need this functionality on the Mac. Now I'm going to transition to the native Mac OS API. As with iOS, there are two major classes you need to be aware of when adopting Vision Kit, the Image Analyzer and the Image Analysis Overlay View. First, the easy part. The Image Analyzer and Analysis process for the Mac is identical to iOS. With the exception of machine-readable codes being a no-op, as I mentioned earlier, everything is the same and is used the same way. The main difference between the iOS Image Analysis Interaction and macOS's Image Analysis Overlay View is how the interaction is added to your application. For iOS, the Image Analysis Interaction is a UI interaction that is added to a view already existing in your app's view hierarchy. But UI interaction does not exist on the Mac, so what do you do? In this case, as the name suggests, the Image Analysis Overlay View is a subclass of NSView. I simply need to add the overlay view in my view hierarchy above my image content. I can add it, for example, here, or even here. But the simplest way is to add it as a subview of my content view. Any way you choose is perfectly fine, but I found adding it as a subview is generally simpler and easier to manage as you don't have to handle repositioning the overlay view when the content's view position changes. And now you know how and where to add it to your app, let's talk rectangles. Since the overlay view doesn't host or render your content, it needs to know exactly where the content exists in relation to its bounds. This is described by the contents rect, which is in unit coordinate space with the origin at the top left. Wow, that was a mouthful. A quick example should help clarify this. Since the overlay view is placed directly over the image view, they have the same bounds. I'll show the bounds with this rectangle, and I'll also add its matching contents rect. Easiest case is if the content matches the bounds. Here, it's simply the unit rectangle. Now, here's an aspect fit. Notice this portion of the image view now has no content underneath it and is reflected in the contents rect. And here's an aspect fill. This portion of the image is no longer visible to the user. Notice how the contents rect changes here. Now, some good news. Just as with UI Image View on iOS, if you are using NS Image View, you can simply set the tracking image view property on the overlay view, and it will calculate all of this for you automatically. If you are not using NS Image View, no worries. You can provide the contents rect by implementing the delegate method contents rect for overlay view. The overlay view will ask for this during layout when its bounds change. 
However, you can manually request this be updated by calling set contents read needs update on the overlay view. Alrighty, let's move on to contextual menus. As I'm sure you are all aware, contextual menus are a huge part of the Mac experience. Now it's easy to add VisionKit provided functionality directly into your menus for features such as live text, lookup, subject lifting, and more. One question you may have is why? Let's examine the Mac OS Photos app. If I were to right click on the text of this iconic road sign, I would just be presented with only the Vision Kit text menu. If I were not over text, I would be offered the app menu instead without any text items. This is not ideal. Now in Mac OS Sonoma, items can be combined into the same menu. You can now easily get to both text and image functionality no matter where the menu event was initiated. This is far better experience for the user and is simple to implement. Let's explore how this can be accomplished in your own app. You now have a new delegate method available, overlay view, updated menu for event at point. The arguments include the event that triggered the menu and the point in the overlay view bounds coordinate space, so you can create any menus you need. From there, you simply need to return the menu that you would like to display. The default implementation returns the vision kit menu. However, you may wish to add your own items to that menu or take items from that menu and add it to yours. Vision Kit menu items are identified by tags, and there is a struct available that contains these tags. We have several items available for copying and sharing the image and subjects, and one for lookup. We also have a special item you can use to find the suggested index to add items to the Vision Kit provided menu, but more on that later. Here are some examples of how this is used. If I had an existing menu and all I were interested in was adding the copy subject item, it could be easily added like this. First, get your apps menu. Then get the item you are interested in, in this case, copy subject, and insert it into your menu. Now it's important to remember the items will only be available if they are actually valid. For example, if there's no subject interaction capable type present, the copy subject item will not be in the menu. Also, for system provided text items, they are included if applicable, but not all are identifiable by tag. You can even customize these items however you would wish. For example, I've changed the item from copy image to copy photo. And worry not about changing these properties. These items are recreated each time and you can change them however you like. Now that I've covered adding items to your existing menu, I'm going to explore an example of how to add items to the Vision Kit menu. As mentioned earlier, the overlay view will provide an item with the tag at the recommended index to insert your items called recommended app items. You simply ask for the index of this item and insert your items at that index. Using this index is optional and not required. However, it is a good way to keep things consistent for your users. You will notice that some of these menu items have special properties. For example, when the subject related menu items are highlighted, the area surrounding my cat Kiki here dims and the glow animation begins, indicating the subject to the user before it is copied or shared. Vision Kit uses the menu appearing as a trigger to begin subject analysis if it hasn't began already. This is all handled for you automatically. In order to provide these features, Vision Kit will set itself as a delegate for any menu you return from the update menu method. If you were previously relying on these NS menu delegate callbacks, Vision Kit now provides its own delegate callbacks, allowing you to retain functionality with your menu items if you were using that previously. And here's a quick tip. If you are in this situation, depending on where the menu was initiated from, it may not come from Vision Kit. So you'll likely want to keep your existing implementation around. Generally, the simplest way to keep this all in sync is to have your overlay view delegate implementation call your matching NS menu delegate implementation Adjusting is necessary. Of course, ensure this makes sense for your app, but in general, this usually does the trick. And that's a quick overview of what's new in Vision Kit. It has been my pleasure to spend time with you today discussing subject lifting and visual lookup, as well as our new Mac OS APIs and related information. I'm looking forward to hear how you use these new capabilities to delight and surprise your customers. And seriously, as always, please have fun. Thank you. Thank you.